Today on Beerus TV, we're going to take a quick break from the ULM series and share the starting point of a brand new Beerus TV Investigates topic. Does raising the pH of the tank really increase calcifying coral growth rates by 50% or more? At the end, we'll also ask who wants some free Neptune and Ecotech gear? Getting better growth out of our corals is a big deal for a lot of reefers, both because these tiny one inch frags a lot of us are buying are not cheap. So if something as simple as raising the pH up a bit can increase growth by 50%, I think it might just be the easiest and most economical method of producing real results in our reef tanks. I don't think there's a single one of us who wouldn't be happy to see our tanks go from this to this 50% faster. Related to that, I think we'd all like to know if these benefits are real. So that's the challenge for this BRS TV Investigates. Maintaining a pH of 8.3 will produce 50% more growth than a pH of 7.8. Reef fantasy or reef certainty? Before we get too far along with this, I would like to thank everyone who made this happen. After getting this going, I understand why we as hobbyists are so reliant on sharing personal experiences as our primary source of knowledge. This type of testing is not just super expensive, but also requires a ridiculous amount of time to set up and perform. In that spirit, I would like to extend a huge thank you to Ecotech for providing all of the lighting and flow for these experiments, Neptune for providing the controllers, dosing pumps, and various pieces of testing equipment, and Worldwide Corals for providing almost 150 corals. It's awesome to work with partners like these who are investing back into the hobby and helping us work towards finding real answers to real questions and progressing the hobby. So if you get a chance, shoot the Worldwide, Ecotech, and Neptune teams a quick thanks, even if it's just in the comments below or in our reef to reef thread. So reefers have been debating the value of maintaining pH and the best methods of doing it for a long time. There's no question you can maintain a tank likely anywhere between a pH of 7.8 and 8.5 and most healthy well-maintained tanks will operate somewhere in that range. However, most reefers would prefer to maintain a more typical ocean value in the 8.0 to 8.3 range. There isn't a lot of data on the benefits or issues associated with the high end of that range between 8.3 and 8.5, probably because that range is pretty uncommon in ocean reefs and probably only a few percent of tanks are above 8.3 for more than a handful of hours a day. However, there's a wealth of data out there on the effects of going lower than 8.1 based on the acidification of the ocean and how higher atmospheric CO2 levels are lowering the pH of the ocean's reefs. Effects ranging from significantly lower calcification and growth to large-scale mortality. Combined with that, I think that there's a fairly overwhelming amount of anecdotal data and reports from individual reefers on the growth and various metabolic health benefits related to maintaining higher pHs in our reef tanks. However, there's often a lot of bias related to individual results and how they're repeated, so it's wise to treat them as a touch point related to the question rather than absolute fact. That said, the science related to all this seems to match reefer's experiences, and I think it's very likely we'll show some benefit from higher pHs. The question is really, are the benefits significant enough to justify the effort to produce them? I think the potential of 50% increased growth will likely meet that threshold for a lot of reefers. So before we get into how we're going to test this theory, I'm sure some of you are curious why elevated pHs or lower pHs are likely to have any effect on coral growth, or at least potentially to this type of dramatic impact. This is a bit reef geeky, so bear with me, but I'll keep it as short and sweet as possible. Keep in mind that all of this is just generally accepted theory, not absolute fact. And there are some subtle variances in opinion on how this all might work, but a majority of researchers seem to come to the conclusion that it works similar to this. Corals and other calcifying organisms like coralline algae have a skeletal structure made up of predominantly calcium carbonate. As the name suggests, calcium carbonate is made up of two substances, calcium and carbonate. So it is the calcium and the carbonate in the surrounding seawater the corals are using to produce their calcium carbonate skeletons. So more or less the coral just allows the calcium and carbonate or bicarbonate through their tissue where the coral precipitates them out to build their calcium carbonate based skeleton. Here's the part related to pH. While presumably it'd be easier for the corals to use carbonate over bicarbonate, a typical pH is in a reef tank near 7.8 to 8.3, a vast majority of the carbon in the water is actually in a bicarbonate form, which is just a carbonate with a hydrogen attached to it. Because there is so much more bicarbonate in the tank than carbonate, it's commonly believed the corals are actually predominantly combining calcium with bicarbonate to form their calcium carbonate-based skeleton. 
You can see in this basic illustration, that means the net result of that reaction is there's now a free hydrogen floating around the coral's tissue that it needs to get rid of. In order to continue growing rapidly, the coral does need to get rid of that excess hydrogen because the hydrogen is making the fluid inside the coral more acidic. That excess acid inside the coral's tissue is theorized to significantly slow down the rate at which it can calcify and grow. This is where this all comes together with the tank water. pH is a measurement of how much free hydrogen is in the tank. At lower pHs near 7.8, the water surrounding the coral has a lot more hydrogen in it, making it much harder for the coral to rid itself of that excess hydrogen it just produced as part of calcification. However, at a pH 8.3, there's significantly less free hydrogen in the water, and it's much easier for the coral to free itself of the excess hydrogen, which in turn means it's easier to maintain a pH within the coral's tissue, which is conducive to rapid calcification and growth. So to sum this all up in one easy sentence, a high pH within the tank means a higher pH within the coral. A higher pH within the coral makes it easier to precipitate calcium carbonate, and the net result is faster rates of calcification and growth that many reefers are after. One addition to this is at higher pHs, the ratio of carbonate to bicarbonate increases slightly, and there's potential for the coral to use the carbonate directly with no need to rid itself of that hydrogen. So there may be a variety of reactions here that are capable of increasing the coral growth rates related to higher pHs. So to put this all to the test, we set up four completely separate 25-gallon test tanks, two redundant tanks, which will be run at 7.8, 24 hours a day, every day, and two tanks will be run at a pH of very close to 8.3 all day, every day. This represents the low and high point of the range reefers typically recommend is safe and a good starting point for an experiment like this. Depending on the results, we may look at this from additional angles in the future, such as moderate pHs or variable pH ranges. Since the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or air surrounding the tank in the room has the largest effect on most reef tanks, we use CO2 to control each tank's pH. With the low 7.8 pH tanks that was achieved by dosing small amounts of CO2 into the intake of a hang-on skimmer, controlled by the Neptune Apex and a carbon doser regulator. For the high 8.3 pH tanks, we used a CO2 scrubber on the intake of the skimmer to remove most of the CO2, also controlled by the apex to open and close the solenoid based on the pH of the tank. Inside each tank is six specimens of six identical coral types for a total of 36 corals, all provided by worldwide corals. They're all dispersed well, so they receive various amounts of light, and we're measuring the growth both by weight as well as visually. We're also using the Ecotech MP10 to provide solid flow patterns coupled with Ecotech's XR15 Radeon Pro with the diffuser running the AB Plus program at 100% intensity. Using the diffuser primarily to blend the individual LED spectrums better. With the diffuser and at this lower depth, we should largely eliminate both spectrum and PAR hotspots. Calcium and alkalinity is managed separately by dosing calcium chloride and sodium bicarbonate. We use bicarbonate because it has less of a significant impact on pH than soda ash. Trace element replenishment and nutrient export will be handed predominantly with 20% water changes twice a month. The skimmers are actually set up to not remove anything just for controlling CO2. So that's a high level view of what we're doing here. We'll let the experiment run as long as is needed to provide the desired results, but I at least hope to have an update at the three month mark. Big thanks to Aaron who sets up and manages all of our experiments. I can't begin to explain how much work this is. In relation to that, also big thanks to my business partner, Andrew, who lets me throw all kinds of resources at these experiments without any questions. It sure is fun to make serious attempts at identifying quantifiable value to some of these things all of us reefers are always talking about. I can't let a week go by without giving away something cool for free, so in the spirit of their generosity of this project, we're going to give away a Neptune dose as well as a Vortec MP10 this week. So hit that link in the lower left or head on over to the site, click on specials and deals and then free stuff to sign up. If you value what we're doing here, give us a quick thumbs up and if you want to see the results of this, hit that subscribe button. See you next week with another episode of BRS TV.